progress coach here at the Sick Fun College. Welcome to the next session of Virtual Find Your Feet. Now, I'm a progress coach and I oversee medicine, dentistry and veterinary students, but I also oversee creative and performing arts students and education society and health students. So like if it is, you might have me as your progress coach when you turn up here in September. Now, something else that we do as part of the college is run societies and kind of clubs. I oversee the Musical Theatre Society here, which is a student-led club uh, which has directors that chooses kind of what we do. Um, as part of that, I help students with auditions for loads of different things, including universities, um, film and TV, and theatre. And something that's become really popular is self-tape auditions. Now, you would have seen the poll this week. They've had two different types of things that you could have chosen from. You could have chosen the way into a performing arts career, how to do that, and what and kind of the bits that are involved. Or you could have chosen self-tape auditions. And the one that you guys have picked in the poll was self-tape auditions. So today, I'm going to run a small session just letting you guys know a little bit about how to do a self-tape audition um, and what that means and how that kind of looks for you guys for next year. Luckily, if you want to come to the Sit Form and Study Theatre, Musical Theatre, um, Dance, you don't have to do an audition. Uh, we don't have an audition process. But there are lots of other places that do, and when you get here, you might have to audition. Musical Theatre Society have auditions regularly for variety shows, and you might have to audition for a role in the course, if that's what we're doing next year. So, just a little bit about self-tape auditions. First and foremost, what are they? So, it might sound a little bit f funny me saying to you, a self-tape audition, you have to film yourself, but that is the way that we're heading. And right now, considering we're in a coronavirus kind of pandemic, everything is happening at home, virtually, in the space and comfort of your own home. So, the first thing that you would have to do with a self-tape audition is you'd have to apply for it. So, you'd have to contact your agency or contact a film company and say, I want to do this audition with this person for this film or for this TV show. Oh, so um, you would be sent an email with instructions of how to do it, and you have to follow those instructions to the letter. So first and foremost, read your email, read your instructions. What sort of things are you likely to do a self-tape for? Well, first and foremost, film and TV. Quite a large amount of film and TV requires you to do self-tape auditions, and the reason for this is really simple. A lot of what you were taught in school and a lot of what you're talk, taught in um, kind of university and college and so on and so forth, a lot of what you're taught is about theatre-based acting. It's not about film-based acting at all. So the good thing about a self-tape audition is that you might be able to uh, go and see and kind of do different things and you might actually be able to be involved in film and TV. Um, you don't have to use them for extra work, luckily. Um, you would use them for, kind of, if you're looking for a senior role or a leading role or a kind of secondary acting role, that is the kind of thing that we would do the self-tape for. So, key things to remember. This setting that I'm in right now, with all these glorious mirrors behind me, you would not do a self-tape in front of a mirror. Okay? A self-tape would happen in front of a solid surface. So, I'm talking a plain wall in your bedroom, I'm talking curtains, I'm talking a uh, textured background. So, I've even seen people do a self tape with rolls of paper that you can buy from the range or the works or so on and so forth and put them behind them. That's the first thing. First thing, very simple background. Okay, where are you going to do it? Then you've got to know that you're in a quiet room, you've got nobody else around, the phone's not going to go, your dog's not going to bark. Your mum's not going to call you for your tea. None of that's going to happen. Um, you're in a quiet space, just you and the person pressing play on the camera or pressing record on your camera. Then you need to think about something that's called slating. Now, not every kind of interview that you do, every audition that you do will ask for slating. What that means is you saying your name and a few other things that they've asked you to state before you do your audition. Now, if they do ask for slating, the one thing I suggest is doing slating before you do your actual filming. Because you might want to film two or three different versions of the text before you send it in. And your slating is better to be separate, so you can just add it on. And all that tends to be is carry out language, then you'd say your age, your date of birth, and then you'd kind of tell them where you're from or the role that you were auditioning for. That tends to be all that you have with slating. Then after slating, you need to think about your lighting. 
This room that I'm in right now has quite nice lighting, although it is downward facing. So downward facing lighting gives you shadows under your eyes, shadows under your chin, it gives you kind of dark circles, all those sorts of things, and that is not what you want. If you can have natural lighting, then we need to go with natural lighting. If not, then the simple ring lights that you get for TikTok and for every other kind of selfie that you've got, put on your phone, that will be good enough because it would light you up. Then after you've thought about your lighting, you've thought about your space, and we've thought about the surface, then we have to think about how we look. How close to the camera are we? Are we going waist up? Are we shoulders up? Are we going kind of full length? That sort of thing is the next thing that we need to look at. So how far away from the camera are you? And also, have they asked you to be a certain distance away? So if they ask you to be waist up, have they asked you to be shoulders up? And if so, think about that. The good thing about being able to do it from the comfort of your own home is that you can try two or three different things. So if you want full length and to be this far away, do it. If you want to come a little bit closer, do it. It's all about being able to see what looks best for you, what makes you feel most comfortable, and also what the director would like to see ultimately. Now, once you do that, most of the time you get given a script. So you get given some dialogue. Um, they would tend not to ask you to pick your own content, so they would send something in the post or send something via email that you would have to act out. Now, the good thing about that is that you can have loads and loads of time rehearsing it. There are two things that you need to remember when you're doing a script reading for a kind of staff tape audition. First thing is always have a piece of paper in your hand. Always have that script in your hand so it doesn't look like you've ultimately perfected it. It looks like it's still a work in progress. Then, the next thing is to learn as much of it as you can. Memorise it just as well as you know the alphabet so that you can stand there and you can say it word for word without any problems whatsoever. The next thing is that you've got to get yourself a reader. So if it's a piece of dialogue, for example, if we're looking at Romeo and Juliet and then looking at the balcony scene, we've got Romeo and Juliet in that scene. So you need somebody else to read the other part. So if I was going to go for Juliet, I'd need my reader or the person pressing record on my camera to be able to read those other bits that I want to do for, for the dialogue. So I would then ask that person to sit with me and kind of go through it a little bit. So I've rehearsed and so I know how they're going to say something and how long they're going to pause or kind of how loud they're going to be. And then you'd ask them to stand just right or just left of the camera. So they're out of shot. You can't see them, but you know that they're there. You, they can be heard on the camera. I can hear them. And it just means that the director can see how you interact with somebody else, but not necessarily see that person acting. Never have I known a, a self tape audition who has had a reader uh, that has been kind of very loud and over expressive. I've never seen a self tape audition that, that has affected the person that is actually auditioning. So, if you've got a reader that's just off the camera, that's the best thing for you. So, I've got somebody today who's obviously come here, pressed record, and he's standing there ready for me to go. Um, and I would use her as a reader today if I was doing a self tape audition. So, Lisa, can you be heard? Yes, I can. Yes, that's right, Carrie. Yeah. So Lisa's here. Lisa's just to the side of the camera. She's press record. You can hear it. You can't see it, but I can see it. I can hear it, and the you know, hopefully you could have all heard it. Um, my fingers crossed. Um, so that's the next step. That's your reader. Then you need to think about what you're wearing, how you've presented yourself. So if you are, so for example, we're looking at Romeo and Juliet, I am not going to go out and hire a costume. So I'm not going to go hire a period piece and go and kind of put a full full length gown on to do a self tape in my living room. That's not what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do, however, is represent myself in a way that would be similar to how she would represent herself. So you're going to be in no patterns, no bold colours, nothing kind of with crazy shapes or big shoulder pads or anything that adjusts your shape in any way, shape or form. So today I've got my grey jumpsuit on and a white t-shirt. These are kind of plain colours Nothing too big, nothing too kind of out of the ordinary. I haven't got big shoulder pads on. I haven't got anything that kind of adjusts my shape too much. It just kind of keeps it there. We might ask you to have your hair and makeup in a particular way, so you need to think about how you look in that sense. So they might ask you to have no makeup on. They might ask you to have a full face of makeup on. And then you need to think about how much makeup that'll, that'll mean for you. So a full face to go out on a night out is completely different compared to a full face that you would wear to work. So think about what the character would need and how the character would represent themselves. And then also, like I said, your hair. So I like to wear my hair down quite a lot. 
Um, but then also, if I'm working with a character or I'm working with somebody who I know as a person, they tend to be working quite a bit and they tend to have a hair back, then I would put my hair back. Whether that's in a bun, whether that's in a ponytail, or plaits or braids or whatever, my hair would be up out of the way, because that's what the director wants. So after you've done that, the next thing is to think about any accessories. So right now I've got my lanyard on and I find it really difficult to not play with my lanyard. Um, I do it quite a lot. I do it kind of as we stand talking day to day. It's just because there is this thing that's hanging around my neck that's got kind of loads of things on it that make noise. Get rid of it. Throw it across the room. Don't use it. Don't look at it. Trying to be as kind of... An old, well, not an organised actually, trying to be kind of um, non distracted and completely necessarily focused on the audition at hand. So, after you've got your lighting, your backdrop, your kind of setup, you've got your script ready, you've got your reader ready, you've looked at your hair, your makeup, um, your outfit, you have kind of 100% kind of ready to go, you've rehearsed it a couple of times, what do we do? Okay, well this is with a new setting. So this is where I'm going to give you just a few little small exercises that I use with the society in order to kind of help you feel a little bit better about what we're going to do. Um, really simply, start with deep breathing. So we breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. We breathe in for four, hold for four, out for four. So we'll do it together. So breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and out. We'll do it again, we'll breathe in for four, hold for four, and out for eight this time. So we are kind of slowly but surely increasing the amount of oxygen that we're taking in, um, and then increasing the amount of time that we're breathing out for. So in for four, hold for four, and out for four. So, and in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we've done a little bit of breathing, we feel a little bit, bath, a bit better about ourselves and being in the space, but now we need to get kind of all that nervous energy out. So I use something with the society, um, and I've always used it, it's something that I was taught when I was younger, and it's called rubber chicken. And it's to make you look like an absolute fool and to make you kind of feel a little bit better about kind of what's going on, and it gets kind of rid of all that nervous energy and all those nervous jitters. Um, really simply, um, all you're doing is shaking hand, hand, feet, feet, that's literally what you're doing, hand, hand, foot, foot, and you do it for eight fifths, so you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 then for four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then for two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, then for one, 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 and then every step from chicken and just completely shake all that energy out of you and get all of that nervous energy completely out ready to go so that now you're a little bit more focused you're not going to fidget you're not going to twiddle while you're doing yourself to take the audition you're not going to kind of be bouncing on your heels or anything like that all of that energy is out in that kind of one instance okay so we've done some breathing we've done some rubber chicken to kind of get all that nervous energy out now we're going to do uh, just a couple of exercises just to warm up your voice and just to warm up your throat. Something that people really struggle with um, is articulation, so how they say words and kind of making sure that it's fully rounded and the sound is able to be understood and heard, um, no matter whether that's on film or in the theatre. So something that I do quite a lot is um, with consonants. Um, so we all know what our consonants are. They are B, C, D, F, G, and we kind of repeat them at a rhythm and a pace and it just helps you kind of open up your mouth and be able to kind of round those sounds and use those consonants, especially the positive consonants. It allows you to be able to get them out a little bit clearer because we all know what it's like when you're nervous. You, your kind of hands start sweating, you get all tongue tied, it doesn't come out like it's supposed to come out. So, this is what we're going to do. So, all you're going to do is look at your consonants. I'm going to just do B, C, and D for now, um, but you can do the whole alphabet if you want to, although X um, and Q are quite hard um, if I do say so myself. So all you're gonna do is go ba 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 ba. So it's really simple. You're just using the noise that the letter B makes. So whenever you say B, it is always a ba sound. When you are kind of saying words, you would go ba 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 ba. And we do the 
same with C. And but C is a cut sound. So you do cut, 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 so when you say D, it's duh, so it's duh, 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 And we do that all the way from B through to Z, and it just kind of warms up your mouth and stops you from getting all tongue tied. And then we move on to our very stereotypical thing that you have all done in theatre or in a classroom somewhere are those tongue twisters. Okay, so you have how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? And we repeat it several times until we're in the rhythm and nobody's gone wrong. And then you take a nice breath and then you pick another one. So unique New York is one that I really like to say. Unique New York um, or red lorry, yellow lorry. Um, you also have the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. Um, that's a very interesting one to say quite quickly as well. Um, so there's quite a lot of tongue twisters that you can do and they're things that, especially if you're looking at Shakespearean texts or you're looking at kind of old English, that you might want to do just to get yourself in the right frame of mind to be able to pronounce those consonants and those vowels correctly throughout the entire self-tape audition. Okay, so hopefully by that point all the nerves have gone. You've gone through the text We've done a little bit of breathing to calm ourselves down. We've shaken all of that kind of negative energy and all that nervous energy out. And we've kind of gone through some of our tongue twisters and some of our consonants to be able to kind of open up our mouth and be able to articulate very well throughout the whole of the self tape audition. So, well, now what do we do? So we get that person who was our reader that we had earlier. Hi, Lisa. Hi. And you ask them to press play. So, or press record. They press record and you start. You then kind of make sure that you're not going too quickly, that it can be heard, and that you are doing it how you've rehearsed it. The first one is always a dud one, always been the first one, never look at it again because you're going to be frustrated with yourself. So the best thing to do is to do two or three more after that first one to make sure that you've got a couple to choose from. Now, after you've done it and you think you've nailed it, make sure that your reader has pressed stop before you start celebrating or before you start saying how awful it was. Because trust me, there are self-tape auditions out there where people have filmed themselves at home and sent them in and at the end they've gone, oh, that was awful, let's do it again. And they haven't cut the video. So that's where the next thing comes in. After we've decided which video we're going to use and which one we're going to send in, then we need to look at editing. Now the one thing I would say is never filter yourself. Never whack a filter on your video, never try and make yourself look better bad in smoke effects or anything like that. It's unnecessary. You don't need it. All you need to do is trim the beginning and trim the end. And if you've been asked to slate, like I said before, film it separately. So you can add that on at the beginning or the end when they've asked you to add it. It tends to be the beginning, so you can just whack that on kind of the beginning in your film editing software. Most laptops have got it, you can download apps now that can use it as well. Um, it's free and then they're great to use and it just means that you've got a perfectly trimmed video that you can send off uh, to send to your self-tape audition. Now then the next thing to do is to upload your video. Add it however they've asked. They could have really specific upload instructions. So some places have like Vimeo accounts and Dropbox accounts and YouTube accounts that are private that you have to upload these things onto. Obviously if that's the case then you need accounts for those things. So first and foremost register for anything that you need to register for. If it's through an agent or if it's through someone that's contacted you by email, sometimes they'll just ask you to email it over. Now the problem then could be that your self-tape audition is too big. Sometimes they actually do a half an hour scene and you film that scene and you've kind of sent it across. But it's not going to go onto an email, is it? It's too big. So then we need to compress the file. So we need to make it a little bit smaller before we can send it off. But try not to kind of mess with the quality settings when we're compressing because obviously you don't want to look a little bit grainy and like you belong in a 1970s film. We want you to look like HD and kind of people be able to see everything and understand everything that you're doing. So once that's said, then it's just waiting for a response. It's waiting for kind of information back or what they want from you, you might be asked to do a recall, you might be asked to read another scene, and you might be asked to do another self-tape audition. Obviously, as I said, in the given kind of times, the self-tape auditions are happening so much more than kind of normal face-to-face -face auditions. You might even be asked to do an audition via Zoom, um, which would be quite fun, but also at the same time, you just need to prepare yourself. So ultimately, there are a few things, like I said, that we need to remember. First and foremost, we need to make sure that we've got a nice flat backdrop, that we've got kind of plain, solid colours, we haven't got too much going on, we can't see a cat walking across your bed or your windowsill, uh, we can't see the breakfast bowl that you've had from your cereal this morning. And if that is the case, then you can edit. So if you need to cross
crop the video and it's too wide, then do that. Think about how far away from the camera you are. Think about how steady the camera is as well. Do you need a tripod? Do you need somebody to stand there holding it? If you've got someone stood there holding it, you don't want them to go walking off over there while you're trying to stand here and do your self-tick. And you need to make sure that, that person's got a steady hand because the last thing you want is this going on. Um, it's not very professional, it doesn't look very good and you're gonna have to re-record ultimately in the first place. Think about how you look, so think about your hair, your makeup, the clothes that you're wearing, and think about your distractions, how many times you're going to play with the things that are kind of, if, do you play with your necklace, do you play with your watch, just don't do those things unless that's something that your character would do. Then you need to get yourself a good reader like I did with Lisa, have it on the side of the camera, or on kind of away from the camera, just so that they can hear you but they can't see you, and just make sure that they're not too loud. If they're shouting, they're going to be heard more than you're going to be heard, and obviously that is not what this is about, we need to make sure that you're the star in the centre of a self tape audition. Then you need to think about, as I've said, the scripting. Make sure that you completely understand it and that you know it. And always remember to have that piece of paper in your hands because then it looks like it's still a work in progress and it's not 100% perfected. Now, you will get some stupid kind of requests uh, from directors that might ask you to do your self-tape audition in the style of something else. Um, I have had self-tape auditions where I've been asked to do it in the style of a pirate. Um, and as much as, and as interested as that is, it's definitely not something that I would really like to do. Um, even though I'm in my living room and there's not a lot of people around, I don't want to redo the audition as a pirate. So just make sure that it's the right thing for you. And just make sure that, yeah, you are going to feel silly doing something like this in the middle of your living room or in the kitchen or wherever you need to do it. But ultimately, if you want that role, if you want that part um, in that film or that television show, then that's something that you're going to have to do. So you're just going to have to keep going and keep recording um, and kind of send them out there and get your name kind of out there and heard. Now obviously at the moment the university auditions, we, have, we don't 100% know how the university auditions are going to go next year. You might have to do self-tapes um, or you might have, be able to go down to the university and have those auditions yourself. We never know. Um, we're not really sure how kind of what the future looks like in terms of auditioning and having those people in a room doing things together. Um, but as far as kind of we are doing at the moment musical theatre society we're auditioning people over our google meets we've been using google meets now for the entirety of lockdown and then um, kind of the half terms to hold our kind of musical theatre society meetings to hold kind of auditions and um, to do filming and to do rehearsals and we ha actually have got our first virtual show so we're doing a show called the show must go on uh, which is based on Andrew Lloyd Webber's kind of uh, musicals that were released onto YouTube. They're released every week and they're only there for a couple of days, so please get onto it. It's not quite Andrew Lloyd Webber now, they're doing loads of different things as well. Um, so the show must go on is the Musical Theatre Society's virtual online show on the 6th of July. Um, so if you want to follow that, we'll pop up more information about it on the college's social media. Uh, you should be able to come along and watch. Um, there's loads of different things from loads of different musicals that have been filmed um, in people's homes and have been kind of made and set up so that you can see kind of what we've been doing during lockdown. Uh, there might even be a few special guest appearances um, along the way from ex members um, and kind of one or two members that have uh, kind of gone on to other things as well. Uh, but it is just a big celebration of the college and the society's hard work, but also celebrating our key workers as well at the end and saying thank you to all the people that have helped everyone through this current pandemic. Are we okay there? Okay, lovely. So I think that's about it. So if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask um, and we'll kind of go through anything from then on. But hopefully I'll see you all in September.